Hi you guys, this is one of Ginger's gems and today we're going to talk about the horizon line in a painting and what it means to an artist or a photographer and, um, and it's often interchangeable with eye level. In other words, what is the eye level of the viewer? The horizon line allows you as the artist to control the eye level of the viewer, where the viewer's eyes are looking. You know, if they were just standing there, what's their eye level? And it's very interesting. There's a lot of theories about where to put an horizon line and what to do, but basically what you can know for sure is that a horizon line is where the sky meets either the water or the land if there are no mountains in the land case, okay? So then this is an example. Of, this was one of our really wonderful lamp examples of a one-point perspective on YouTube last year. We showed you the horizon line, where to put a vanishing point, how to get the perspective right if you were talking about one-point perspective. And that's another reason why you want to know where the horizon line is because, you, you know, all perspective lines in a landscape are subject to where the horizon line is and where the vanishing point is in relationship to that. In this particular uh, tutorial on clouds, we also talk about one point perspective. This is a lesson found in our Academy of Fine Art and Acrylic Painting, where we go into real in-depth uh, information on what you need to know as an artist to really be a successful painter. So what we want to do today is just very briefly in these Ginger's Gems, have it so that, you know, never again are you going to have any questions about horizon lines, okay? That's what we want you to know. So first off, I want to talk a, a few paintings about horizon lines. Here's an example of an orchard, uh, it's a vineyard, and in the fall, this is called Vineyards of the Fall, it's in, in our academy, and there's some mountains here, and so somewhere kind of below the mountains is your horizon line, right back here, and if you follow from a perspective standpoint, if you follow, I think I'd rather use an arrow. If you follow this line here, okay, like that, follow that line there, where these lines meet, it's probably where your horizon line is, where this, where this line meets right here, see that? Then the horizon line is going to be right along there, okay? And you need that for perspective, but also it also is up from the design standpoint of the painting. How does the painting look? For instance, if you divide it 50 50 in half, is it going to look as good? So here's another example of a horizon line. Or this is a painting we called Road Less Traveled. And we've got a hill here, so now suddenly things have changed because we've got some mountains, we've got a hill. And from a perspective standpoint, we know that things get smaller as they, as they uh, get, go away from the viewer. So, and our little, um, our hill goes down, our road goes down. So somewhere probably right along here is the horizon line, kind of in between these two, um, you know, hills and this one. But it's not as important in this painting because we've got a hill and so we've changed how we're doing, um, you know, the perspective as far as these posts. Um, another really good example I, I love is um, this mountain scene. This was one um, we talked about uh, this year in the Academy on how to paint a mountain. In fact, this was a cool video just on some, for all kinds of reasons, doing rocks. But we've got the mountains and we've got this these trees. Now, what's interesting about this one, this is really interesting to me, the horizon line is actually below all this. It's actually, we don't, we don't see it in this picture. It's actually below the um, somewhere in here, somewhere if these trees all came down, it's probably, you know, somewhere in here. It's really just kind of down here somewhere. Okay, we just kind of straighten that out. That's where it's below the picture. So it's not we we we're saying that the um, uh, the trees are getting small, you know, kind of smaller as they go back, and um, it's kind of coming down that way. Okay, so now. Let's talk about, uh, we've done that one. Let's see, where else can we discuss horizon lines? I said another video. What, what, what if there's not a horizon line? What kind of use? Usually we talk about landscapes now, not, not still lives, but landscapes. So still lives, you talk about what's eye level to the viewer. viewer. But in, in, in a landscape, you're talking about, again, uh, where the, the sky and the, and the ocean or the dirt meet. That's what you're talking about. And in the case of Mrs. Motts and her dog, this was a YouTube uh, lesson we did last year, very successful impressionistic lesson. And in this case, we don't, see, we don't see enough of the lake to even know where it is. We're not dealing with it. So this is a case where it probably wouldn't uh, be as important, you know, is not as important. 
Uh, again, a good reference. Again, a good reference photo never hurts. Now, speaking of reference photos, let me just show you this one. Uh, here's an example of one point perspective, that very similar to the one I showed you on the boat dock. And um, see your horizon line. Uh, you have to know where that is, and then it's going right here, uh, this dot right on the center. So that's how we figured out our perspective. Okay, look at the bottom line of this one. The low, lower part does this, lower part does this. See the lower part of these rails, and the rest are going straight across. Okay, so that's an example of um, why, where horizon line can be very helpful. And you'll notice that this is probably about halfway of the picture. The photographer was very good. I had a photographer one time tell me that because of my height, and I'm not all that tall, I was about 5'10", that I was um, I needed to kneel down to take my photos because as general, you don't want photos that divide the canvas totally in half, okay? You, you really don't want that. So it, here's an other example of um, uh, horizon lines here. This is... Um, there's some fog here back here and so if you imagine that the hill came down here like this this is Lake Gene Geneva this is the Montreux where I went to high school isn't that cool I found this photo I thought you guys I'd share that a little bit with you so again if this is a rectangle you've got here's halfway most people put their horizon lines um, uh, you know any number of places you know maybe it's slightly above above the middle point here or uh, way below or like this, but generally try to avoid the middle of your canvas when you can, right? And if you see a photograph that's done that, then uh, make some adjustments, okay? You make some adjustments with the horizon line. So as we come back over here again to, uh, in kind of conclusion, um, let's see, there's a couple other things I was going to show you. Yeah, this one was interesting because you have the lake here. The horizon line probably is back here somewhere, all right? But uh, all we know is that the things are get smaller as they go back. This this is kind of coming down like this. This is coming down like this, kind of an angle. Things get smaller as they go back, get farther away. So the best thing you can do, best thing you can do is have a reference photo, okay? So that you kind of understand where you're putting it rather than making it up. So go back over here and let's just recap. Your horizon line is where the the sky meets either the land or the water, and uh, particularly if there's no mountains, and you, you want to know about it. Why do you want to know about it? Because eventually you want to know it from a painting design, from a good painting desi design standpoint, and also from a perspective point as we talk more in future uh, gems on perspective. And what I'd love for you to do, if you'd be so kind, I'd love for you to, to keep writing me and telling me what it is that you like about these gems and what is you want to know. Over here, um, on my notes, I have a whole little list of, um, of notes that I've written down about what you've said. I read your comments. Please comment. That's important to me when you comment and tell me. We read everyone, and I really consider what you have to say. So we appreciate very much you watching these. I hope now that we've sort of solved the mystery of horizon lines. And one last photo I want to show you here. John said I forgot to show this one to you, and I did. Was this is a case where it was sort of a hill. So again, the, the you're not really dealing with it. Okay, we're not really dealing with it. But ask yourself. This is good practice when you're looking at a painting. Ask yourself where is the horizon line, and does it, for me, and does it matter? in this particular painting I'm designing because this, and again, we'll talk about painting design and all kinds of stuff, but these are just some basic terminologies and understanding you as an artist need to know. Where's my eye level of the viewer? What are they looking at? So thanks you guys for watching, and we appreciate it if you put this in your comments. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. We appreciate very much uh, the fact that uh, you guys tune in weekly to see what we're doing, and besides doing the gems, of course, we're always doing acrylic painting. Uh, tutorials as well. And thanks so much and have a fabulous day.